Hey guys, welcome back to What the Fat. This is your host, Dr. Ryan Lowry, coming to you with episode 87. We are approaching, uh, coming close on 100. We got to do something special for that. But today is going to be a micro podcast. And it's something that I think is extremely time sensitive and relevant to a lot of people who are just coming out of the new year and either still on their goals or have fallen off the bandwagon for their new year's resolutions. So this one's going to be all about anchoring to your why. And so our team pulled some statistics that I'm really excited to share with you guys. It was really mind blowing to me to realize how many people actually fall off of the bandwagon from their New Year's resolutions this early. I mean, it's really, it's still January and people are still falling off the bandwagon. And the thing that sparked it is I thought it would last maybe three and a half, four, five weeks, and then people start falling off. But there was actually research that was done by this company called Strava. It's a social network for athletes. And they found that Friday, January 12th, uh, is the fateful day when motivation begins to falter. Uh, and they analyzed like over 31.5 million global activities. I think they're utilizing like some of the apps where people either track food or track their fitness or track their workouts, whatever they're tracking. And like January 12th is when you start to see all these people start falling off. Uh, so they've deemed it quitters day. And it's sad to think about that, but it's it's the sad reality of the situation is that people are giving up that quickly, not even two full weeks into January, and people are giving up. Uh, there's another report that showed that only 9.2% of people ever achieve their New Year's resolutions and break free from their bad habits. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on why that might be the case. Uh, one of the reasons is I think sometimes people create a laundry list of New Year's resolutions. Like, I want to lose 100 pounds. I want to stop smoking. I want to travel here. I want to do this. And, and sometimes it becomes overwhelming. And we'll talk about how to shift that or change that mindset because there's still time. Just because it's not December 31st, uh, you can still make – huge, huge strides in 2019. And I want to help you guys do that. So when it comes to anchoring in, when it comes to completely breaking free from old habits, there's actually research from University College London that shows it takes about 66 days to completely break free from an old habit uh, and actually a little bit longer to master something new. Uh, so this is really interesting. Really, really interesting. So we're talking a little over two months, and most people are quitting a little under two weeks. So how do we get them to that point? And I want to first talk about, I'll, I'll use myself as an example, because there are some things that I had that are very ambitious on my uh, New Year's resolutions that I haven't kept up with. And I can make a million and one excuses, but uh, the, the simple fact is I'm not following through on it and I need to understand if it's still a priority in my life, if it's still something I want to accomplish, uh, and how I go about doing that. So first I'll talk about, uh, the ones I am sticking to, right? So I still wake up, I utilize an app called Elevate where I basically do like these brain games early on in the morning. It's a really cool thing. I believe it's free and you can download it, but it's random things to just kind of keep your brain sharp, um, and so there's math, there's English. It's just kind of like old school stuff that you, you forgot about, but it's cool to kind of implement it back in and track your progress just to get my brain firing up going first thing in the morning. The second thing I've stuck to is um, Spanish. So I'm really, really taking an active, active approach to try and learn as Spanish as much as possible. So I'm using two apps. One's Duolingo, so I get on, I do my Duolingo uh, lesson every single morning, and the other one's Babbel. Uh, so Babbel I had, a, it was, I had to pay for, but it's pretty cool. It's really interesting. Like I speak into it, and it like tells me if I'm, I'm right or wrong. But uh, it's been amazing learning that, and I'm, I'm starting to try and really take an active process because I, wanna f I truly want to learn more Spanish. Um, I've stuck with the gratitude journal. You guys know me by now. That's something that's ingrained inside of my soul is first thing in the morning, as soon as I get up out of bed, I immediately go and go to my gratitude journal and write down my three things I'm grateful for, three things I'm looking forward to today, and my, my I am statement. 
uh, very, very important part of my day. So those things I've stuck to. Things I haven't stuck to as well as I had originally intended or planned out as far as New Year's resolutions is I wanted to read a book a day. And I wanted to, and how, how am I going to accomplish that? Well, there's an app called Blinkist that I've used and I've downloaded, and it basically summarizes all of these books into something that you could literally listen to in maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And part of the reason is uh, I haven't been going out on long walks in the morning. Like for some reason, I still don't understand why, but Scoot is resistant to going out on long walks in the morning. It's probably because it's cold out. And he, he's, he's just being a little a little brat, but uh, he doesn't want to go out on these long walks. So like I'm like, oh, cool, I could just go hop back on my computer and continue answering emails and doing work. When in reality, I had scheduled or planned that time to really listen to Blinkist and go on these long walks, but I haven't been following through on that. So what I need to do is I need to sit down and reevaluate and go, do I still want to accomplish that goal? If so, how do I stop making an excuse for it and stop blaming or utilizing Scoot as a as a pitfall. Instead, how do I still make sure I accomplish it? Maybe I can listen to it on my way to the gym in the morning or on my way to work, whatever it may be. How do I still accomplish that? Uh, and then one of the things I've, I've been doing but not doing as well as I could have is listening to uh, Audible books. So I downloaded Audible. It's amazing. I'm listening to two different books right now, but just staying more consistent with it. I don't drive very long, but I need to figure out how to be more consistent with it. So how do we do that? And that's ultimately the goal of what I'm going to try and get across today. And part of this is for me to really anchor back into myself, but also hopefully for some of you that might have fallen off or might have been, been super ambitious at the beginning of the year, but been like, oh, wow, why haven't I been doing that? And it's kind of just gone to the wayside. So first and foremost, I think it's an understand uh, how winners win. I have 21 different things. I pulled this from an article, added some of my own of how winners win. I think these are very, very important. And I think you guys will agree with me that these are all attributes of people who are winners. And by winners, I don't mean people who are making billions and billions and billions of dollars. Like, sure, it monetarily are those are those winners sure but i mean people who are truly fulfilling what their goals are and what they were put on this planet to do one they keep a journal very very big on the journaling uh not only gratitude journal but every single morning i write down what i'm trying to accomplish for the day and things that need to get done i think it's important i want to harp on that one because i think it's very important because there's actually psychology showing that like when you write something down and even if you're about to do it like say i'm about to go on and i need to buy something from amazon i will literally write it down in my book go on the computer do it and then cross it off like there's psychology behind that actual act of checking that off for accomplishment so one so that's number one they keep a journal number two they talk to themselves most of the time in the mirror uh, kind of reflecting of like, hey, you got this. This is what, what are your goals? Uh, what did you accomplish today? I think self-talk, sometimes people look at it as crazy, but sometimes it can be very, very important. Really a, a way for you to check in. What did I accomplish at the end of the day? What could I have gotten better at? I talk about that all the time in regards to fulfillment. Self-talk is absolutely essential to check in and understand, did I accomplish today what I set out to do? And if not, why? So self-talk. Three, they meditate. It's something that I want to do more and more of. I've been accomplishing it. I use uh, kind of this device called a Muse. Uh, it's been absolutely amazing. I love it. But meditating, really allowing yourself to bring the stress levels down, no matter if it's the, begin the beginning of the day, middle of the day, or at night, bringing those stress levels down and really getting in tune with your body. Four, they read. Five, they embrace their fears, very big one. Six, they know that failure is part of success. And a lot of times people say, well, is it failure? Is it just a learning lesson? I look at it as a learning lesson. Um, at some things that I'm not able to accomplish, cool, I've learned how to do it better next time or how to accomplish something down the road. Uh, seven, they only associate with positive people. If you're listening to this podcast, you already know how I feel about that. So you guys know how big of an anchor that is for me is surrounding myself with positive people. It doesn't matter the nonsense that's going out, uh, whether it's in the media or whether it's someone ripping apart 
uh, the way you eat or the way you train or you as a person. It just disregard it. I'm so focused on positivity. It's insane. Um, eight, they set intentions. Nine, they are grateful. You know how big I am on gratitude. Ten, they prioritize their time. If you listen to the previous podcast, you know I did one on the concept of like I don't have time and how much that drives me insane when people say that. People who are winners prioritize their time accordingly. They understand these are the things that I want to accomplish and this is how I prioritize time to make that a priority. Uh, very, very, very key. They don't sweat the small stuff. There's a book actually I think that's called They Don't Sweat the Small Stuff because it's just small stuff. <laughs> uh, great book. 12, they focus on what they can control. Things that are outside of their circumstances, like things that come up, they focus. They don't focus on that. They focus on everything that is within their control. 13, they actively listen. 14, they enjoy money as a byproduct of their dream. Uh, 15, they don't count on luck. They make their own. 16, they love having fun and celebrating small victories. Something that's very important. I think oftentimes we're, we're hypercritical versus uh, being able to celebrate the wins. I think sometimes we beat ourselves up more and more like, oh, I fell off of my diet, so I'm just going to beat myself up, and then it leads to this downhill spiral versus like, oh, hey, um, so let's celebrate the small win of like, hey, I stuck to it this week. I went to the gym every day that I, that I uh, said I was going to go. It was a great week. And when I mean celebrate, I don't mean, hey, let's go out and get a huge Sunday and splurge and do it. Like rewarding yourself with food or something that's negative uh, wouldn't be the ideal way to do it. But maybe it's like, hey, let's go out and have a nice dinner or, hey, let's go out and see a movie together. Like let's have a date night to celebrate those small wins. And it kind of anchors you in and reinforces that behavior. Uh, 17, they forgive themselves and others. 18, they never give up but change when needed. Uh, 19, they don't make rash or emotional decisions. 20, they listen to their intuition. And one of the most important ones that we're going to dig into a little bit deeper is they anchor to their why. Think about that for a second. They anchor to their why. Whenever you're trying to accomplish something, I, I highly recommend you guys go back and look at your New Year's resolutions and each one of the things you're trying to accomplish, ask yourself the simple question, why do I want to accomplish this? Why do I want to learn Spanish? Why do I want to lose 10 pounds? Why do I want to go to the gym every single day? Ask yourself why. If you can't answer it correctly, you need to readjust. If you, if you literally don't have an answer and you're just like, I don't know, I just want to, you need to readjust. You need to change the, your thinking because you, you need to have it so clear in your mind of why you want to accomplish something. And I'm going to give you guys examples so you, so you can kind of use it and apply it for yourself. Uh, the question that I get all the time is, uh, why do you, I travel around the world speaking at events, right? Sometimes completely free. Like I volunteer my time to go around and speak at these events all around the world. Why do I do that? Why do I put all that wear and tear on my body, right? One of the reasons is when I think about how much I want to travel, how much I want to go and speak at all these different events or do all of these Instagram lives or do this podcast or do Facebook lives, YouTube, whatever it may be, whenever I think about why I want to accomplish more of that and we have set targets to do that, I think back to my grandmother, I think back to my family and how much I wish someone would have educated them, how much I wish resources would have been available for her back when she was still alive, that memory is so anchored inside of my mind that anytime I have the opportunity to go out and spread education and talk to someone or give someone information that might be that one switch that they needed to make a change, I'm in. Because I'm so anchored into my why for doing that and for educating that there's nothing that can come in and stand in my way because I, I'm so, it's so ingrained in my being that it's there. So I challenge you guys, whether your goal is to lose five pounds of fat, the next time you go to press the snooze button, think back to your why. Ask yourself, why is it that I made this goal that I want to lose five pounds of fat? 
Is it that I just wanted to look better to be on social media? That That's not a very good why, right? If you just want to post better Instagram pictures and that's the reason you want to lose five pounds of fat, that's not a really good why. But one of the things like I talk to my mom about all time is like, hey, if you're trying to quit smoking or you're trying to lose fat, her why is like she is so in love with Scooter, right, my, my, my pup. But I'm like, mom, eventually I'm going to have grandchildren. Like uh, I'm going to have children and they're going to be your grandchildren. So for her, she anch- the reason why she's, she stays true to her diet most of the time and she's really consistent. Now she's made a habit of going to the gym, which makes me so, so happy to see her doing that and going on walks every day. And she's working on the smoking part of things as well. She's so anchored into her why that one day she wants to be around and and be able to play with her grandkids beyond Scooter. She wants to be able to play and be around uh, my children one day, my brother's children one day, that she's so anchored into that. That's her why. She doesn't care about, oh, I want to look better in this shirt. She cares about, I want to be able to 10, 15 years from now be able to play with my grandchildren. That's something when she's getting up at 4.30 in the morning is stuck in the back of her mind to go, that's my why. That's the reason why, yeah, it's a lot. It's easy to press the snooze button. It's easy. But at the end of the day, I know the decision I make on the micro scale today is going to impact that long-term vision and that long-term goal of me one day being able to run around and play with my grandchildren and take them to theme parks and be able to walk around with them. That's ingrained in her. So I challenge you guys to do the same thing. I challenge you guys for whatever your goal may be. Really get clear on why you want to accomplish that goal. Why does it matter to you? Find the root cause and keep asking it keep asking it over and over again. And so you need to recognize why you're falling off track and then put a plan in place to make sure you're prepared to not do that again. I think anchoring to your why is one of those things that can really allow you uh, and prevent you from falling off and be there as kind of the support guide whenever you need or whenever you're like, you know what, it's just too early or you know what, it's just one piece of cheesecake or you know what, I don't need to go on and learn Spanish today. I'll do it next week. Always think back to why you're trying to accomplish that. For me, like the reason why I'm so focused on learning Spanish and I'm like really trying to take an active effort to do this is because I understand that in Latin communities, like this conversation is growing and I want to be able to help support the people who are inside of Latin communities and Spanish speaking countries. I want to be able to have some type of dialogue and be able to connect with them to help support them in this mission, to help support them in educating and making this world a better place. I want to be able to do that. And I feel like having the language barrier can sometimes prevent that from happening. And I don't want that to be a crutch. I don't want to go to my grave knowing I wish I would have been able to help so many more people, but I just wasn't able to connect with them because I didn't put in the time every morning for 10 minutes of my day to learn a language. So I, that's, I, I really, really hope that that point sits with you guys and you understand how important it is to tie into your why. So I want to wrap this up. I want to wrap this episode up and talk to you guys and leave you with five key takeaways on how to stick to your New Year's resolutions. And if you don't even want to call it a New Year's resolution, call it a January whatever, whatever date you're listening to this on, resolution. It's a 2019 resolution. Like, Don't wait till February 1st. Start now. Start right now. And so here's five things. One, create daily goals. Two, create accountability. Well, as you're going through these goals and you're going through your why for why you want to accomplish those goals, tell someone, tell your best friend, tell your family members. So that way when you're like thinking about falling off, there's this level of accountability to be like, you know what, think about your why. I do that all the time with my mom uh, and she does it all the time with me. I always go, mom, one day, one, and she, I don't even need to say anymore. And she knows, she's like, you're right, 
I'll get up tomorrow morning. I'm going to go do it. There's this level of accountability that is just so amazing and can keep you in check. So create accountability is number two. Number three is understand and overcome obstacles. Stuff's going to happen, right? No matter how amazing uh, you might think things may go, shit's going to happen. It's going to come up. How you overcome that and how you bust through those plateaus is ultimately going to determine your success. So understanding that there will be obstacles is the first hurdle. And then understanding that you have the willpower and you have the ability to get through those obstacles, whatever it may be, whatever you're facing, that's the key is how do you overcome those obstacles? Number three. Number four is celebrate wins and envision what success, further success looks like. So those small wins like I said, celebrate them. I think it's very important to provide that reinforcement and then envision what is future success? How do I build on this, right? Now that I've accomplished one thing, I just don't want to stay here. How do I continue to build upon this? So always envisioning and seeing what future success looks like uh, and kind of anchoring that down, writing it down and say, how do I continue to improve on this process? Number five Guys, and you know you know this now. You know I talk to you all the time about this. Is always keep perspective. There's so many things that are going to happen. So many things that can get in the way of you accomplishing what you want to do. Keep perspective. Understand that there will be challenges. There will be trials and tribulations. But you know what? You woke up today and someone else didn't. You have the ability to make a change and someone else may not have that ability. Someone else went to their grave thinking, what if you have the ability to prevent that from happening by starting today? So ultimately keep things in perspective and understand that you have a opportunity right in front of you. You're listening to this podcast and you have an opportunity to make a change right now. Whether you do or you don't is up to you. I can't force anyone to make a change. But when you look back in 10 years and if you don't make that change, the amount of regret that's going to be filled inside of you is just going to be overwhelming. And for me, that's one of my biggest fears is living in a state of regret and understanding that I never want to look back and say, what if? So keep things in perspective. Understand that it doesn't matter what your situation is, if you're broke, if you're injured, if you have... Uh, relationship problems, your situation is much better than someone else's. Stop thinking the grass is always greener on the other on, on the other side. Understand the opportunity that's right in front of your face and take it. So, guys, with that being said, I appreciate you guys tuning in today. I would love to hear more about it. Reach out. Let me know what things you're anchoring to. Let me know your why. Let me know what things you're trying to accomplish now going forward into 2019. And hopefully you guys have stuck with it. Hopefully you guys have stuck with a lot of your New Year's resolutions. But the stats say that most people don't. But I want you guys to be the exception. Don't become that statistic. Become the st statistic of someone who's exceptional and breaking through those barriers. So with that being said, guys, I appreciate you guys tuning in for this micro podcast. I'll talk to you later. As always, make positivity louder.